A gorgeous and fascinating group of five column capitals survived from the Crusader period in Nazareth. This site had been traditionally viewed within Christianity as the place where the Virgin Mary received the message called the Annunciation from the Archangel Gabriel, making Nazareth also the place where the figure of Jesus was believed to have spent his childhood. So, with that combination, Nazareth became a very popular destination for Christian pilgrims, and this extended even into the Crusader period. As we see here in this manuscript illumination, the 13th century French king, Louis IX, who disastrously actually was part of the 7th and 9th Crusades, made a pilgrimage to Nazareth. But what would one of these medieval pilgrims have seen when they came to the city of Nazareth? Let's look at a little bit of the earlier histories. Tancred, the crusader ruler of this region, had repaired the ancient basilica that he found standing over the Grotto of the Annunciation, we get a description in this account by a pilgrim from 1103. The city of Nazareth is entirely laid waste and overthrown by the Saracens, but the place of the Annunciation of our Lord is indicated by a celebrated church, and so on. Crusader rebuilding of the Church of the Annunciation was still in process when the great Islamic general Saladin beat the Crusader forces in 1187 at the pivotal Battle of Hattin and reconquered Nazareth. These column capitals were likely never incorporated into the Church's Shrine of the Annunciation, a deduction that we can make from both the fact that their condition is absolutely pristine and also the way the backgrounds appear still unfinished and relatively rough compared to the level of carving devoted to the figures. But we have some other theories to explain that too. Perhaps the backgrounds were left rough in anticipation of maybe being covered over with plaster and paint, which we see in some other medieval art, or something sort of specific to their location, the holy site maybe was being emphasized by the roughness to make it seem more like the cave, which was inside this church in Nazareth as a shrine. The five Nazareth column capitals were discovered during excavations in 1908. Although we found other fragments in later excavations, these are the only ones that have been found intact. Jerusalem had become quite the hub for crusader sculpture, and they had big sculptural projects such as the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, Church of the Ascension, and Tomb of the Virgin. That said, note that it was for the Church of the Annunciation in Nazareth that which generally regarded as the finest crusader sculpture was made. So let's take a closer look at it. This, which is the largest of the five sculptures, shows the Virgin Mary wearing a crown and rather forcefully leading along a bearded man with a halo, who we usually interpret as an apostle. The twisting figure displaying a nude rear end is a demon which tips us off to the setting. Hell. This comes from a medieval tradition in which Mary led the apostles through hell, probably borrowing from the Byzantine harrowing of hell scenes in which Christ had a similar role, and also from Mary's role in medieval theology as the Magistra Apostolorum, that is, teacher of the apostles. Whereas this specific scene is unusual in Romanesque art, all of the components are popular at the time individually, and we have many fantastically overwrought depictions of demons from churches at the time. These are just a few from Conk and Auton. This column capital from Nazareth shows St. Peter in the act of miraculously healing a woman, Tabitha, who is shown rising from the bed, which is at a diagonal slant. This is a scene recounted in Acts chapter 9. Another interesting feature in this scene of St. Peter is the architectural frame you might be noticing around the top of the figures, which is a little different than those typically seen in the medieval West, and perhaps reflects the influence of Makarnas, a feature in Islamic architecture. This mixture of Western medieval and Islamic features 
is a hallmark trait of crusader art, of course, and seen throughout many other works coming out of the eclectic workshops of the crusaders, whether we're talking about sculpture, manuscripts, or architecture. The Nazareth capitals share a style that suggests the sculptors who carved these extraordinary works came from northern France. The closest comparison, though, only adds to the mystery for a single capital in a church in Barry, France, seems to be created by one of the Nazareth sculptors, but it is completely different than the other sculptures in that French church. So if you figure that out, send me an email and let me know what's going on. This distinctive style of the Nazareth sculptures is given a dramatic expression in this scene from the St. Thomas Capitol. Christ, whose holiness is emphasized by the rather enormous halo with a cross behind his head, is shown bearing part of his chest as a testament for the doubting Apostle Thomas. This moment came from the biblical account of the days following Christ's death in Jerusalem, which was only about 60 miles away from the place where these sculptures were made, that is, in Nazareth. The artist for the Crusaders was calling upon the importance of place in order to create a group of sculptures that interweave the multiple visual traditions of the region.